Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning or this afternoon or this evening, but regardless of what time of day or night you're watching this video, thank you so much for tuning in. This morning, we are in the hamlet of Woodmere, which is in the town of Hempstead, part of the five towns in Nassau County on Long Island in the great state of New York. Today, we're gonna have to help out this family that got bamboozled. They got bamboozled. They bought this house right behind me about two years ago, two and a half years ago. And when they bought the house, the seller promised them that, yeah, we converted you from oil to gas. You gave you a gas boiler. Well, that's far from the truth, but today we're gonna make it happen. And real quick, I get to give a special shout out to the folks over at Jasco Plumbing Supply over in the Bronx, New York. Thank you so much for being a sponsor of the Mikey Pipes Philanthropy Charitable Organization and pipesforfree.org, where we provide free plumbing and heating services to those who need it. Check it out, Mikey Pipes Philanthropy Channel, only on YouTube. Let's go with today's install. Let's see what we're working with here. It's a Green Mountain boiler. She thought she was oil, but actually she's gas. This is a Carlin. This is a Carlin conversion gun that some quote unquote plumbers like to install on oil fired equipment and call it a gas boiler. This is far from a gas boiler. This is an oil fired boiler with not a Green Mountain gas burner on it. And that's not Really? They have a list of all the different guns that are allowed to be on the machine. And, and this model is not compatible with this. And what's really, really messed up, by the way. What's really messed up is when they bought this house a couple years ago, the seller told them, that, yeah, I put an oil, a gas fired boiler in. It ain't no any better. And that's disgusting. All right, first thing we're gonna do, turn off the switch to the boiler. At the end of the day, it's not gonna say oil anymore. Stick around because I have something really, really nice that's gonna go on this plate right here. You're gonna love it. You're gonna wanna know where I got them from, so stick around. Daniel, we have to feed the people. There it is. There's one hand. Let's do center of gravity. Ready? Look at those guns. Yeah, baby. Little baby boiler. Well, well, I'm a clean CGA5. See? And unlike, <laughs> you think Frankie could do this drunk? <laughs> We'd have to ask him. Because <laughs> that's what he was doing the other night. <laughs> and that's why he was late to school. Allegedly. You know, I don't want Frankie suing me, but you're going to make myself look like an ass. You know, I'm embarrassing you on YouTube. On your second. I already got your second chance, exactly. Oh my gosh, she's almost full. There she is. <sighs> I need to go to the gym more. How you, how's that gym thing working out for you? <laughs> all right. Really? Like almost every single day. Wow, almost as much as Air Force None. Maybe even more. He goes there every day. Air Force None goes like. Every day for four hours. But then all Peter eats is Taco Bell, so. Look at that, it's magic. Exactly. Do you know the seller? Yeah. For all the shit things that he screwed me over on. Well, it's actually, you know, uh, we were telling your wife, your wife, right, mm -hmm. yesterday? Oh, the other day? Um, the boiler is not designed for, for gas. Mm -hmm. It's designed for oil. Yeah. But what's even more of a, a stuck mm -hmm. is that the model that they put in, the gun that they put in to make it quote-unquote gas, is not even compatible with the boiler, according to the manufacturer of that of that gun. That's just that's just disgusting. It's terrible. It's disgusting. I have a list that's compiled over between fifty and seventy five grand of things that were in the contract of what he had to complete that he hasn't, or that he's actually. That's just gross. Terrible. That's gross. It shows you what society we live in today. I had an inspection. I had everything. He's my next door neighbor in the cellar. Really? Yeah. Originally, the guy who did all the work. 
we were like using him just like okay he knows the equipment yeah and it's sad the all right so the boiler's off to the side i will call the scrap metal guys because this thing weighs a lot <laughs> she heavy she's a heavy girl so I got to call into the scrap metal guy. Julio will come save the day and he'll get paid. Probably worth about 120 bucks of scrap metal. There's a new baby boiler. Well McLean. CGA5. What a great boiler. What I love about the CGAs is the built-in low water cutoff. It's really, really nice. What I don't get is that air tapping right there, but it is what it is. We're gonna slide this bad boy in there and start piping her in for three zones with ECM circulators. All right, so a little after nine o'clock, the boiler's in position. My return manifold is set up. That's an easy header. It's a three for three zones. It's inch and a quarter on both ends and three quarter coming out of each uh, end or each tapping. Um, I like doing it that way. It works well for me. Okay, coming out of the top of the boiler, we have a inch and a quarter by I think that's an eighth, no, a quarter inch. And that's for the temperature and pressure tire decay gauge. We're gonna come up, come up to right around here. So I think I need around 20 inches. Again, I don't need anything exact right now. We're gonna do an elbow swing joint right here, elbow, elbow, put our spiral vent, and then come across with our three zone header like that for the circs here. We'll use some threaded rod and some split ring hangers or maybe even a, uh, a clevis hanger to support the weight at the end of that third zone. Those three circulators weigh a lot. So let's go cut some pipe. All right, so I got my tri stand set up. I got my oiler. I already cut a piece of pipe with my Milwaukee bandsaw. I'm gonna use the rigid machine to uh, thread some pipe. Let's get it done, guys. All right, I got some cardboard on the floor. And one of the things I like to do is just spray it with a little bit of oil, just like that. And I guess it would be smart if the <laughs> that was down. Put a little bit of oil in there to start. I'm using the rigid 600. I'm gonna use a three quarter die. I'm gonna get threaded. I did say three quarter die, didn't I? I meant inch and a quarter. It looks like I gotta move around my, my clamp on my vise. So let's spin that around a little bit. Make it a little more easier. Let's put that right there. Okay. Boom. We'll start it up. Right now she's going in reverse. Let's put it to forward. While I'm threading, I'm literally applying considerably applying cutting oil onto the thread. All right, that's going to make this cut so much easier, and it's also going to preserve the integrity of the die. Right? So I got there. My I cut to where my threads are exposed. Now there is there is a method to the madness. There is a number of threads you need, and you can refer to the plumber's black book for the number of threads per per inch of pipe. take a rag and wipe that down. All right. Now, a lot of you may ask, Mikey Pipes, why don't you to burn the pipe? And uh, let me tell you, I learned plumbing by the old timers, you know, what we call dead men, right? That's the way I was taught. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna defer to them for an answer. But if you notice, when I use the bandsaw, there's no that inside bevel there, right? When you're using that tubing cutter, you're taking that little wheel, that cutting wheel, and it's cutting into or pushing into the pipe itself, and then you get that little burr in the inside. Similar to what Daniel's using, the automatic cutter on the copper there. So I have no burr there. I don't need to deep, de uh, to deep burr. Okay, Daniel, make sure you don't hit my, my phone. Okay. okay, yesterday, 
I get a very disturbing call. For those who are just tuning in, someone got fired yesterday, and they don't even know it yet. Okay? That's what that's that's the the lead up to this. Yesterday I get a phone call. And yeah, I'm gonna uh I'm not gonna mention the name yet, because the person doesn't know it yet. But yesterday I get a very disturbing phone call from basically the principal of school. Yep. The principal reached out. And not only there was a principal, there was a vice principal too on the phone. I kid you not. I felt like I felt like my, my, my parents back in the days getting the phone call from the principal's office that, you know, your son's suspended or in detention or <laughs> blah, 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 right? I get a phone call yesterday from the director of, of training over at uh, the training center where Peter and Frankie are at, right? Well, let's just say that it wasn't a phone call to let me know how great my two employees were. Let's just say that, okay? So for all those watching on this camera right here, you're gonna have to check out the Mikey Pipes Uncensored channel. Uh, link in the description box down below. That's how we get it done. There's the boiler. There's Julio. Julio's That's amigo. A pickle. The pickle? Tico, 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 Tico. Tico. Julio Nephew. Oh, Julio Nephew Tico. Wow. <laughs> Looks like a mini girl show in here. <laughs> and oxygen tanks. How are we doing this? Okay. Can you pull up? Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. All right. Okay. Go on, more. Mass, 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 mass. Okay, good. Okay. Now I'm gonna have to. You got to put it down. You got. No, no, no. It's easy for me. Yeah, sure. Dump over there. One more. Okay. Keep going. Thank you. All right. So, so far I got my two circulators set up. I got to do the isolation flanges with purge on top for one, two, and three. Oh, man. Imagine it would lined up perfectly. Oh. Oh, fudge. All right. I've been putzing around for the past, I don't know, 40 minutes. Finished the supply side with the three Taco circulators, the Webstone isolation flanges with purge on the supply side. That's the way I put them in. Got a piece of threaded rod going up to a hanger right there with the clevis hanger on this end. It's hit the circulator a little bit, but I'm okay with that. It looks nice. I want to rather have it supporting all the weight at the end rather than right here. That's fine. My level. Yeah, when it settles a little bit, this will be level. It's a little pitched uphill a little bit, but it's okay. It pockets the air, bubbles the air will be stuck there. It's all good. Um, I originally had my Webstone expansion tank isolation valve right under my air separator, and I always keep them there. But for some reason, my uh, diverter, my draft diverter that comes with the boiler, is smacking it. So if it's smacking that, it's going to be smacking my expansion tank. So I just made an elbow break, a little short, little um, shoulder nipple there. With an elbow, another nipple, another elbow, and my extra number 30 is going to hang right there. And yes, folks, it looks a little tight there, but we measured. Actually, Daniel measured. He said I got 15 inches on that, and I got 16 inches here. My, 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 your sister sell me at three inches, but it's all right. Okay. And the boiler's gone. Looking a little for cocked right there. We have to bump that up a little bit right there. Okay. Matter of fact, since I'm such a perfectionist. Uh oh. All right, it is 1245, and ladies and gentlemen, we are just about done. We're just doing a commission and commissioning and startup process on this boiler. All right, a little bit of a trip right there. What's up with that? A little bit of a trip right there. Hmm. All right, so let's review. Um, I had a height issue. If you notice, we're up one step here. So I had a height issue, and I couldn't put my damper directly on top of the draft hood. Um, you cannot modify the draft hood. You can't cut it back. So 
I threw an elbow there, six inch, and I put my damper there and I put a piece of smoke pipe right there, connect to my existing flue. Uh, so we're good there. Um, things are pretty nice here. I, I like, I really like how this machine came out, this install. Uh, Daniel was in charge of the gas, so we cut back the piece that was coming out here and we cut back this piece a little bit and we came up with half inch. We threw a three quarter by half inch uh, black reducing uh, elbow there. Uh, we need an extension piece there, I guess, because there's a coupling. There is our union, and there's our three-quarter inch gas cock, and of course, drip leg. In New York City, you don't do drip legs because they don't want people hooking up gas appliances illegally. So in New York City, you won't see drip legs. While we're on this side of the boiler, I have a my three-zone uh, manifold, easy header right there, one, two, three. And I'm using these Webstone isolation valves with purge. It's like a ball valve with a purge built into it. It's really nice. So we could drain down there. And uh, it looks nice. You know, it was in the budget for the job. So we put that in there. Um, we forgot to put a drain in. So we took the cap off and put a one, sorry, inch and a quarter by one, and then one by three quarter uh, reducing couplings there. And uh, our, bo our boiler drain. We got to do a drip leg on the relief valve on top of the boiler. We come up with the factory supplied inch and a quarter by quarter inch T for a triticator gauge. Behind that is a nipple and a reducing coupling for an automatic air vent, not factory supplied. And I don't know why they have it there, but it's how they do that. Okay. Well, Daniel's running uh, TT from XX. We'll talk about the supply piping. Come up with an inch and a quarter elbow six inch nipple another six inch nipple i want this to be uniform and plus it really looks nice i have an inch and a quarter ips spiral vent if you're using a spiral vent instead of an air scoop you don't need that 18 inches of, of pipe length on both sides of it read it it's in the manual ladies and gentlemen it's in the manual at the bottom of that i got a couple elbows because i was hitting my draft hood i pushed that forward a little bit i used the webstone isolation valve for the expansion tank with the pressure reducing valve by Kalefi with the built-in pressure gauge and pressure is preset at around 12 PSI. Okay, on the other side, we have three zones. And for those three zones are controlled by circulators. We're using the Taco 0015E ECM three seats Burke high efficiency circulators. Uh, right now they're all set to high. I just wanna get water moving quickly uh, and heat up the house because it's a little cold outside. Hooking up to an existing PEX. Um, we have our Webstone half inch press isolation flange with purge on all of them without purge on the bottom IPS. There's our zone relay. We'll clean that up a little bit. Other than that, we just got to finish the combustion analysis and uh, have a nice day. Daniel, yes. did you graduate high school? Yeah. Or did you get a GED? Graduated high school. How do you spell install? <laughs> Two L's. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, because I put one L. That's right, you did. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he was thinking. I know it's just me and him, but new install. <laughs> Boy, it's finally off at temperature. Really nice job we did here. Really, really, really nice job. Wow, I'm actually very impressed. I'm very impressed the way this came out, and I'm equally impressed by the zoning, how everything lined up right there perfectly. Look, it looks like it's made to be that way. The 3H threaded rod and the inch and a quarter clevis hanger. Yeah, I know it's a little for cock there, but you know what? It's nice and it's supporting up that weight. There's a lot of weight here and it's level and it's really, really, really nice. There's a little hole for our combustion analysis and there's a combustion analysis and commissioning report. Very, very nice. Very, very nice boiler. And just in case you thought I forgot, if you've been sticking around, you've been waiting for the grand finale. You ready for the grand finale? Yes. Okay, let's show them the grand finale. If you remember at the beginning of this installation, I zoomed in on the oil boiler emergency switch. And I said, if you stick around to the end, I got something special for all of you. Take a look at this. There it is. Oh, let's get it on there just perfect, no bubbles. It's like putting on a screen protector on your iPhone. But there that is. Look at that. I should patent that. I really should. If you want any of these, email me, mikeatmikeypipes.com. I get mine from Command Printing. 
Right, last time I ordered them was about 10 years ago. They come in a big fat roll, but a lot of them. And uh, I have to modify it because they made it the same dimensions as the actual switch plate, which doesn't is not practical because of its beveled edges on the end. So I have to trim them, but command printing. They printed them, they customized it, and it really does a nice epic completion of an amazing job that me and Daniel did. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, be well, God bless, stay safe. Smash that thumbs up button. Don't forget, sharing is caring and subscribe.